Hi, and welcome to this month's episode of Smashing Apps. Now, I'm very excited to be joined today by three incredibly talented and really awesome people, three talented educators who I've had the pleasure of meeting um, in Reading over the summer. And all of them have got so much to share and so many ideas. And today we're going to limit them to one idea each, but we're hopefully going to have a good chance to discuss those ideas and learn from them. So let's get to know who we've got on the panel. I'm going to pass over to Sophie, first of all, for a quick introduction. Hi, uh, so I'm Sophie Lamb. I am a year one teacher at uh, Kendall Primary School in South East London. Uh, Kerry? Hi, I'm Kerry Abercrombie. I am the Curriculum Development Officer for Digital Learning in Falkirk in Scotland, and I will pass over to my friend Sebastian. Hi, I'm Sebastian Achertz, and I'm a middle school teacher from Austria. Uh, back to Jacob. Perfect. So we've got a nice mix of different people today. So we're going to hopefully dive straight in with Sophie, who is going to show us a really clever app called Caligo. Over to you, Sophie. Here is Caligo. So when you first look at it, it looks a bit not sure what this is, but it's basically a handwriting app and they use a variety of activities which are curriculum aligned to support children in developing their handwriting and then more recently they've added spelling activities as well so i've got a range of some of the activities that have available on here so i can give you a little bit of a demo um so you can use an apple pen or you can use a logitech crayon or a stylus it's quite flexible but your children are given certain activities and then they can use the pen which is going to look slightly wobbly because my ipad stood up but uh you get the idea um and it uses uh gamification and uh reward activities to encourage the children with their handwriting so i didn't do very well there i didn't get a star but it's showing you did quite well um, and then what's really spectacular about Caligo is that it provides individualized feedback to the students, which for anyone who's taught handwriting to little children is very challenging because they can often write something that looks like it's been formed correctly, but without having watched them form the letters yourself, you can't tell if they have actually done it correctly. And then this becomes more challenging when you try to teach them joined up writing later. Um, but you can't watch 30 children do handwriting all at the same time. So it is notoriously difficult. Where, and this is where Caligo comes in. It provides feedback to the children and increases the challenge in the activities for you. So that's a nice one that's for just building uh, the correct motions. There's also chances to bring in uh, shape activities where you can ask, ask the children to outline shapes um, to help build pencil control. And then more recently, they've started to add spelling activities. Um, so there's lots of um, the spelling ones, excellent look, cover, write activities that the children really enjoy. You can also add uh, numbers as well. So all of these can be controlled with the um, teacher dashboard. You can set whichever, whichever activities you like. You can record instructions for the children to listen to. But the children's favorite bit is down here in the modules. So this is just accessible to the children all the time. If you haven't had a chance to assign something to them, they love to come here. And you can see you've got the tracing lines activities that I just demonstrated. There's number um, writing activities as well, capital letters. And um, they particularly like to draw as well. So sometimes we use, I practice drawing one, not for handwriting, but as a mini whiteboard in the classroom, which works quite well as well. Um, so that's the app. You can see I've added another activity here. This one is from the um, Caligo's preset lessons. So this is from the year two spelling lists, which activities come up. So I'll quickly show you the dashboard. This is what the dashboard looks like. You can see I've got my students along the side here. I can quickly access Caligo's preset lessons. 
You can create a school library. So if I started to create lessons, I could then share those with other members of staff. Oh, I can have my personalized lessons. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the rest of them because it's got student names in it. But yeah, so that's kind of Amazing. Good. Thank you so much, Sophie. That's a really good look at, at the app and the features. Now, Caligo is an app that I've never used before. So I've come into this looking, really looking forward to seeing what it has to offer. I can see Carrie nodding along there as well. Um, and it seems like it's a really powerful tool. A lot of things that you, you said that jumped out at me as being like, oh, wow, that's a great idea sort of moment. And one of them was the bank of activities when there aren't lessons assigned. I know there's a lot of different apps and things where you have to assign a lesson each day. And if you don't, the children log in and there's either everything is unlimited or there's absolutely nothing. So to yeah. have like, a bank of things sounds good. It's very handy. The it, 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 like, it works really well for those children who finish quickly with the activities that you've got. They're not just then sat there twiddling their thumbs or getting up to no good. They can, <laughs> you can say, you can now go to the modules and choose what you'd like to do. It also works quite well as a motivator. So if you finish your tasks, you can go to the modules and do whichever one you want to do there. So it kind of works well on both levels. I like that as a reward for, for finishing afterwards. So do your children, do you use it kind of like as a daily activity? Do you use it kind of as and when you need to? How does it work in the classroom? So we use it as a daily activity and we combine it with writing in the book. So we use Caligo as a starter mm -hmm. for 10 minutes. We will use it to teach them a letter of formation and make sure they've got some practice. They can then get feedback to ensure that they're doing that letter formation correctly. And then we'll do 10 minutes writing in their books, the same letter formation, so that they're transferring those skills to... Oh, that's uh, lovely. Well. I can see Kerry's doing a lot of nodding. Sebastian <laughs> is very much like expressionless. I think he's just <laughs> by this. So Kerry is like, yes, yes. Kerry, what are you thinking? Yeah, I just, I, I'm nodding along with the whole thing of using it for 10 minutes and then moving it to the book. It's that idea of that digilogue, isn't it? Um, like a hybrid of digital and in real life. And I think... You know, certainly, I, I don't teach little small children, um, but I know that that's a concern for a lot of parents and a lot of teachers is the the handwriting situation. Um, and I think that's a really nice um, balance of a method that you can use to teach handwriting, which uses digital tools and takes the benefit of that, that personalised feedback, um, and, and, and also retains the sort of, you know, physical part of it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a very, um, it worked. Our parents were a little bit nervous to start with as well. Mm -hmm. And I think generally where we have iPads one to one, they're a bit nervous about the amount of time children are spending on devices and the impact that has on other areas of their education. And Caligo has been a nice option because it has homework feature as well. So if children have, uh, even just their finger they can use at home but if they have a device at home then they can we can assign activities they can access at home as well which has meant parents have seen actually yeah this is something that is supporting not just their um, knowledge of spelling and phonics but their handwriting as well and and as Kerry said that digilogue which is my new favorite word at the minute <laughs> approach that actually is something to complement education it's not a replacement absolutely so sebastian where you, i'm guessing you're working with older students so perhaps it's not quite as relevant for you have you got any thoughts on it on it though oh um although i'm teaching 10 to 14 year olds i think this would be a great exercise for many of them as well uh because their handwriting uh get worse and worse um unfortunately uh i'm interested in how much time do you spend um using this app uh, and go back to paperwork? So we do this app 10 minutes a day, and then it's followed immediately by an activity done in their book so that they're transferring the skills that they've just done. Um, so not long, just a little bit of practice, mm -hmm. but we're doing it with younger children. So we're building up their, their knowledge because we discovered as well that um, with handwriting, if children can write without conscious thought, it means that they can spend more time 
considering the, all the other areas they have to for writing as well, their spelling, their grammar, their phonics. Um, it takes one thing away that means that, and actually when we've used it, we found that their writing has improved as a byproduct because they could write with more fluency, with more speed, but without as much conscious thought. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. That's uh, that's so powerful to hear. That's the impact it's had already. It's it's wonderful. And you know, being able to to take away that cognitive load, it really does enhance the children's writing. We know that as teachers. That if you're trying to think about five different things at once, you're not going to make much progress. You're not going to enjoy it. And that's the thing. Writing is such a complicated process, and we often take it for granted as adults because we have that automaticity. But young children don't. And we're asking them to write stories and think of interesting words and adjectives that they can use. And yet they're still trying to consider how do I actually put my pen on the paper and form any of these words, never mind use an interesting word. Yeah. I think that's that's a lot to think about there from the app and then the conversation after. So Sophie, a massive thank you. I think that hopefully people watching this will be inspired to give that a bit of thought and, and try Caligo. I know they've got a trial, haven't they? They offer to schools, I believe. Yeah. Um, get stuck in and try it out. So thank you so much, Sophie. I really appreciate that. So carry the no pressure. We're doing brilliantly so far. So let's keep that going. Keep it up high. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um I would like to talk today a little bit about smashing together two apps, no pun intended, based on the title. <laughs> series um but i am a media and english teacher by trade so we do a lot of filmmaking um and i love kino as many of our colleagues do because it's very versatile but one of the things that i love using keynote for is as a sort of filmmaking companion so we love imovie obviously it's simple it's easy to use but sometimes it just doesn't have the flexibility to allow pupils to be really creative or to do certain things and i find that kino is one of the best ways to open up iMovie a little bit more. Um, so we discovered this um, when we were doing higher media, um, which is sort of 17, 16, 17 year olds. It's the equivalent of sort of A-level. Um, and the children had made, or young people had made films and we wanted them to add a title card. So I'm just gonna share my screen so where we started using this um, was with higher media, which is sort of 16, 17 year olds, A level sort of equivalent. And we were making films for their examination piece and I wanted them to add in a title card to their film. And you can see on the screen here just now, an example of some actual student work. So by using Keynote, they are able to add in lots of different elements. You can see the top left there, there's two photographs spliced together. Top right, you have, um, you know, a really animated sort of look, a sort of um, cartoonish type situation. Bottom left, this was actually made of lots of different shapes that were pieced together to make the icon of the, um, this was like a sort of dystopian thing. Um, and then bottom right, you can see just beautiful photography and a little bit of lovely typography. So lots and lots of ways to really get the feel across about what the film is going to be about. Um, and actually, it's super, super easy to do. So if I just come out of the this example one and I'll show you um, how easy that is to do. So if I go into a title card that I've made here, now it's not as good as the students' ones. Um, they are much better at this than I am. But you can see I just have various different things going on. I've got a couple of shapes. I've got a couple of um, pieces of text, which I have animated already. Um, so that they're all going to move at the at the right time, hopefully. And you can see here, if I just go back to the one that is together, it looks like it's just a bunch of um, colours. But if I just tap on play, you will see that it is actually animated, right? So we've got our animated piece. Lovely, great. But we want to put that into iMovie. So all we're going to do is we're going to tap on the little downwards arrow just next to the title of the deck and I'm going to tap on export and I'm going to choose movie and I'm just going to do a little wee bit here because you can see here the third one down says slide range and obviously I've got that one that I've messed up first so I don't want slide number one I just want slide number two to slide number two and I'm going to just export that and it'll take a wee second obviously the longer it is the longer it takes and I'm just going to tap on save video and that's going to go to my photos. And if I just pop into iMovie, 
you will see that I have probably the world's most boring film here, which is just an example. You would already have, obviously, all of your um, shot footage that's been cut together. And I'm just going to go to video, and you can see there just in my recently added that my film title is there. And if I tap on it, I'm just going to press plus, and it's going to go to the start. And we now have something that's a little bit more interesting with regards to a film title rather than just the titles that are in iMovie. So lots and lots and lots of ways that you can use that. We can actually also go further though with Keynote and iMovie. So one of the things that we figured out when we were on this journey of opening up iMovie with Keynote um, was the fact that if we use transparent backgrounds, we can overlay different things onto the top of the film to get a little bit of special effects going. Nice. So what we've got here is a, um, a recording screen, if you like. Remember the old style cameras where you would yeah. record, record, record. <laughs> That's kind of what we're going for here. And we're just going to tap on the paintbrush at the top right hand corner. And when I go to background, I'm just going to choose no fill and it's going to look crazy for a second, right? So no fill. It looks like you've messed it up, but it's fine. And we're just going to do that exact same process again. We're going to go to the little downwards arrow and we're going to go to export. Um, and this time I'm actually going to export it as an image just to show you that you can do it with images and with video. Okay. So if I choose image, again, I'm just going to change that slide range one to one which is really helpful, by the way, if you've got lots of different animations in one deck, you don't have to have a million different decks. I'm going to export that. Same thing again, save image. And if I just go back into iMovie, so in my photos, I have my recently added photo. I'm going to tap on it. I'm going to tap this time on the three dots rather than the plus because I want it to go over the top. And I'm going to choose picture in picture. And what that does is you can see it adds it in over the top. Now, obviously it's really small, it's not in the right sort of place. So I'm just gonna tap, just on the preview pane, there's three little icons down the right-hand side. I'm gonna tap the one that's two arrows together. And that's gonna let me just pinch to drag it to the right place. And you can see now we have our overlaid feature, which is pretty fun. Um, and now that they've added green screen to iMovie, there's lots and lots we can do. So if, I'm just going to open up a keynote again. And you can see here I have um, a little piece of text that I want to go over the top of the, um, the scene that we're seeing first. And this is sort of in the Wes Anderson style um, of making school. And you can see that the background is a kind of... Um, very Wes Anderson mustardy colour. I'm just going to change that background by tapping the paintbrush and I'm going to change it to green. Let's go for this green. And I'm just going to do that same thing again. I'm going to go downwards arrow. I'm going to go export. I'm going to go movie and just change that slide range again. Just number two this time. And then we've got save video. Notice that took a little bit longer because this one's a little bit longer. Back into iMovie. And if I just go up to the left, video recently added. There it is at the very top. Three dots again because I want to do something different than just put it in the timeline. And this time if I choose green, blue screen, it'll take a little second, but it will eventually take out all of the green, she says, as, as she hopes that it works. There you go. And we have the animated title with the typewriter effect, et cetera, et cetera. So lots and lots and lots of stuff that you can do. Uh, my biggest, the biggest thing would be just play, play with it and see what you can do because there is so, so much potential when you mix these two core apps together. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much loads of ideas there, loads of things that I'm thinking, oh, I could try that, that I've not considered before. And I think those those title cards that you showed, the examples, I think, of your students, they were beautiful. What a lovely way to enhance an already great project by having those those title cards that really give it that extra level of, of quality and, and scale. Yeah, that was it. it. It did add a level of quality. What it also did is it was really useful in helping them to think about their film as a whole piece 
So the title card is almost like a front cover, if you like, yeah. um, of a film or a TV show. So you want it to reflect some elements of the plot, the tone, you know, the style, et cetera, et cetera. So it really helped them to kind of distill that down, which they were doing higher media. And I won't go into the details of what you have to do for that, but it really helped them to write much more effectively um, um, about the choices they've made. And I think more than that as well, it gives them a chance to develop some different skills that they wouldn't be doing in just a regular editing. If you're doing point and shoot and you're editing an iMovie, you're really just cutting, you're just sort of cutting things down, trimming stuff, yeah. um, you know, adding a soundtrack, stuff like that. But here they were getting to play with animation, they were doing a little bit of art design, you know, um, even some sort of colour grading stuff, et cetera, et cetera. So it really opened up they were doing more advanced filmmaking in my yeah. view anyway. yeah no absolutely it really does it shines through in those in those title cards alone and i wish i could see the projects i bet the film <laughs> are, are fantastic as well but yeah it's definitely got my head spinning with ideas that i'd like to try into in time movie sebastian what about you and your students is this something that you think you could use are you doing it already yes definitely i also like using uh keynote to create title cards as well but you got me with the, the record one this looks amazing and yeah my head is also spinning uh, how i can use this i've never seen this before and this looks really interesting yeah Great work, Gary. <laughs> and sophie how about you yeah no it was very good um it, i would like to do some movie making with my children um and I've been looking at iMovie, a little worried it's a bit complicated for small Thanks. children, but actually they know how to use Keynote, they're quite good at Keynote already, so if we can bring some of those skills and then teach them how to add it to iMovie, I'm just imagining them making little um, the, the films with no speech and it used to have oh, a yeah. little card in between that would tell yeah. you what was going on. So they can film little bits, but also there's that writing element. You've got to write what's going what's going on for your um, audience. So yeah, lots of exciting possibilities. I love that you've mentioned Silent Movie because that was another project that we did that really we really used Keynote because it allowed them to make th those in between slides that you're talking about with the action and the dialogue on it, like they can be so creative rather than be restricted to the title box that's already in iMovie. So yeah. it's really great for silent films. That's a really cool idea, so I like that. I wonder if as a, a younger teacher, or teacher younger children, there's always a way of maybe scaffolding it where perhaps you could have a blank project with a few title cards in and then the children fill in the, the gaps in the middle perhaps as well. Because I think some of my younger ones would probably struggle to do the whole process and the time it would take maybe isn't worth the the balance in terms of the learning but if you if you have that ready to go yeah so we use um there's one of the reasons we love keynote pages numbers the ability to create templates that you can then share with your students works really well so yeah we could create a series of title cards for them that they can then still feel like they're adding to the project it but could actually also be scaffolded like the the deck that you make with the title cards that you're going to include could then have the the slides in between that tell them what they've to go and shoot so yeah. that they've always got like the full thing that's a good idea yeah then they've got the instructions as well and yeah. then a little bit of independence rather than me standing over their shoulder like go and find a bug <laughs> and... <Yeah. laughs> oh. this is great and another another Thing now that I just want to go and start thinking about this for my classroom and I want to start taking these ideas and, and developing them with my students because I think there's so much potential and like you said Kerry you've got two apps that the children are familiar with and you're combining them in a way which opens up more possibilities for both apps really which is fantastic so thank you so much for taking the time to share that awesome stuff so we've had two amazing ideas already today and we're going to finish up with a third one from Sebastian so I'll pass over to you my friend Thank you, Jacob. Yeah, as a, um, a language teacher, I am really enthusiastic about various forms of storytelling. Um, and today I, I will demonstrate how to take images and, and uh, drawings in Keynote um, a step further and put them into the, the AR Maker app. I use uh, this exa example from year five. This uh, workbook was about pirates 
and um, here they had to draw their pirate, uh, the pirate ship, the pirate flag, and here they, they were, it was a bit of um, an exercise of drag and drop and look up some pictures from the internet. And in the end, they had to copy paste all the items um, to create a nice scene. And then mm -hmm. later on, they uh, had to write a text about, about the pirate and make a voice recording. So uh, a step further would be, but first let me show you the results of the, the class. So this, these were the first pictures, and I really loved them because it was the first time uh, they did this uh, because they got the iPad a week before. So what you can do now um, is I have prepared my scene already. I just used four items because of uh, time now. So what you have to do is just add more slides. In this case, I have four items, so I need four uh, more slides. I copy paste my pirate to the first slide, then the treasure chest to the second slide, the pirate flag to the third. Let's put it a bit in the middle, and the ship to the last slide. So um, now it's important to remove the background. Um, so I hold the command key on my keyboard to select all of them. I select the paintbrush and choose no fill. Now it looks like it is black. And then we have to go this way, export it as images. Then the slide range is from 12 to 15. 12 to 15. And very important, you have to select PNG and uh, be, uh, make sure that transparent backgrounds is on. So when you export it, then you save the four images. You go to the AR Maker app, which is a really nice app uh, to start with augmented reality. You create your own scene, and then you scan the surface. Uh, when you are satisfied with it, you just click inside, and then you have to click on New. You go to the Files and select the photos you want. Done. Go back again. And yeah. As you can see, you put the pirate here. Otherwise, it would float uh, above the floor a bit. So you do this with every picture. Very fast. And the flag. And last but not least, the pirate ship. So now you have all of the items here, and now you can set up a nice little scene. For example, the pirate, you place it here. Then the treasure chest, let's say a bit in the back. For this exercise, this is really cool because uh, this uh, chapter, this unit was all about prepositions of place. So using in, on, under, behind, next to, and so on. So the kids can set up a scene like they want. And in the end, when they are, they are satisfied with their scene, they can um, film it or take a photo. I would recommend to use the screen record here. Um, but now this won't work, I think. So let's say make it 10 seconds. And of course, you can move around a bit. And when you're done, it is automatically or should automatically, automatically be here. Yes. So you can now go to Keynote again. Let's delete those and put in this video. And afterwards, you can uh, let the pupils uh, make a voice recording again. 
or it's always uh, it's always a, a matter of time as well. Of course, you can um, import that movie into iMovie, add uh, titles to it, and and make the voice recording there. Yeah, it's just uh, another variety of of storytelling, and the children love love augmented reality. And if there is uh, a lack of time, I just tell them, okay, just take a, a, a selfie with your with your character, and then they just take a, a selfie. Incredible! That is really really interesting. Thank you. I, I love the idea of getting a selfie with your character. That's just genius. And every child wants to do that, don't they? Especially if they've made like their own imaginary friend. Why not get a selfie with them? That's fantastic. Yes. And I think the the actual pirates project that you shared, that whole workbook, what a lovely, a lovely project for your students. They're very lucky to to have experiences like that where they can work through with something that's so well thought out. And yeah, Thank doing, you. Thank you. Doing the the prepositions on in front of that works beautifully with AR as well, doesn't it? I mean, that's there are so many things all in one that I just want to say this is amazing, this is amazing, this is amazing. It's all amazing. Kerry, have you had, uh, have you been using this with your students at all? Have you made movies using AR or? No, we haven't. It's something that I'm really interested in, but what is <laughs> maybe slightly embarrassing to admit is that I always think that it's really complicated and you've made me see today that it is so simple. Like I, <laughs> like I, I just had no idea that it was genuinely that simple. Um, I, I'm really excited for going away and playing with that a little bit, actually, to be honest, Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's really easy. And um, I always try to let them draw something or um, yeah, also do some animations in, in Keynote as well. And from there to, to, to um, the augmented reality maker, it isn't very far. And they love it. And you know, in the past, before we had the iPads at, at school, um, I used to write the text with them together, and then it was up to them. So I told them, okay, now you have to write the text. Oh, not again. Uh, we hate writing a text. And now they, they can't wait until they, do, uh, they are allowed to do it on their own. They love writing texts now. Uh, and yeah, they, they remember things. Uh, more easily and effectively and yeah this is uh, what i as a language teacher really love wow <laughs> when you mentioned about drawing there i was like oh because it immediately made me think of like think about kids in sophie's class who could draw you know <laughs> monsters or imaginary like imaginary animals or yeah. like you said jacob a, a, an imaginary friend and then bring it into the classroom into the world that they're in that's that would be so that, that's like magic yeah i would like first that um project please because we do pirates in the <laughs> so <laughs> if you could send me that that would be great of course because um, i've yeah i've equally i've looked i've looked at ar maker but kind of been a bit not sure where to start and it looked maybe a bit complicated but it really really is not from what i've just seen that was an excellent demonstration yeah um, and yeah the children young children would absolutely love that as soon as you brought up a pirate ship i was like oh we could put them in the sandpit and then they can have a proper yeah. kind of um they can build settings and scenes to put their characters on um and yeah do bring storytelling to life it's that having a real world purpose to your writing, I think is really important. Um, and often I think uh, English teaching can be a bit contrived. Let's write a letter to someone you're never going to meet or, you know, and a little arcane. Whereas if you give children real world applications for their work, suddenly they have no problem doing it. You don't get any complaints, they're eager, they want to have a go. And I think technology like that can really open the, the possibilities for for all of our students mm -hmm. that yeah absolutely i also think the simplicity of i'm teaching prepositions and i'm yeah. going to use the r maker to get them to use the english word or it is english is it english that you teach yeah 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 so get them to use the english word for where they are placed that's so simple everything about it is so simple but so effective mm -hmm. and 
um, after practicing uh, those pirate scenes, you know, I printed them uh, out in another sheet of paper with the pirate on it and so on. And now you can collect um, their work and those are the exercises for them. Like I showed you the, the pictures. So I, I took a screenshot, I gave it to them and, and said, okay, choose a, another scene from a colleague a classmate and and write the text about it and yeah so you can make your your life a bit easier <laughs> <laughs> amazing I, I feel very very inspired to go and give this a go and the thought that's kind of crossed my mind is that with the when you have a photograph now you can just remove the subject can't you really easily and i wonder if you could then use that as a, a transparent png to then use an ar as well so you could get a photograph of something in the classroom or they could edit a photograph or some way of using that as a way of getting quicker characters rather than drawing each one sometimes. So there's just yeah. loads of ways out there that this could this could develop. So Sebastian, thank you so much for, uh, for sharing that. I just want to jump in one last idea because if I don't say it, then it'll die in my head. <laughs> How fun would a very first AR project be with the AR maker being Honey, I Shrunk the Class? And you do that remove background with all the class really small, like little That's borrowers. Classroom. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have that, that now. Amazing idea. I don't teach small kids, so you can have that one for free. <laughs> <laughs> you can go hide in the playground. They'll love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, that is that is so cool. <laughs> do you find that the children struggle to find space? That's the only problem that I have with it. It's in a class in, in our classroom, so there isn't enough space to actually build their little scenes with them all working together. They're always walking in front of each other or knocking things over. It is a challenge. We're quite fortunate. We have an exceptionally large playground for an inner city okay. school. So I we tend to just try and get them outside if we need to do. Yeah. Um, so it meant we had to put Wi-Fi on the outside of the building, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it works. Basically. Worth doing. And we've got a, a, like a forest school. So yeah, they can go put themselves in the forest. Or, or yeah, so lots of ideas there. So no. thank you for that, Sebastian. And I really, really would like that slide deck, please. <laughs> yes, I, I will send it to you. And you. Um, I can recommend you um, that when you um, work with the AR maker, with the kids for the very first time, use a, a already given scene there. There are the, the three yeah. little pigs. Do you know the story of the three little pigs? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I... I put them uh, the story on, on keynote slides and then we read the paragraph and then they have to to set up the scene in, in AR maker. Film it and and yeah, you know, with the fox, I think it's a fox, yeah, who destroys the the, the shed and the whatever. So this is a very good starting point because um, you don't have to remove a background, you, you don't have to to fill in uh, images from yourself. Uh, from your library, uh, you just can use the items from there. That's a great idea. That's another really, like, a really useful tool because good writing starts with good oracy. And if they can yeah. speak the story properly, then they can move on to writing it. Yeah. And the three little is such a, you know, we use, we've used it before we talk for writing. It's such a kind of iconic story they all know. Yeah. No, it's wonderful having those characters in the app already because like you say Sebastian it's a really quick starting project you haven't got to spend ages getting stuff in there it's just ready to go so no it's amazing in fact thank you all three of you we've had some really really inspiring ideas today Caligo looks like a fantastic app for doing handwriting I love the kind of the AI features where it will give the children personalized feedback and what an amazing way of then bridging that between digital and paper to encourage those skills the working keynote in iMovie Kelly is, is just superb. Again, so many different applications for that, so many ways of up-leveling projects and getting children more creative options to express themselves. And speaking of that, AR Maker, Sebastian, fantastic, a really lovely demo as well. I think like Kerry said, it is something which people think is very complicated. They tend to stay away from, but actually you really brought that to life. And I didn't realize that you need to position the characters at the bottom of that grid, otherwise they float in space. So I've always had those people floating in space. So everyone's like, this is rubbish. But that suddenly makes a lot more sense. And I'll be I'll be taking that into my classroom when, when we you know, have the next lesson with that as well. So 
all three of you, thank you so, so much. And hopefully people that are watching this, if anyone's watching this, let's assume someone at least in the world somewhere is, is watching this. Um, I hope you've taken some ideas as well for your classroom. And if you do, I'm sure we'd all love to, to hear what they are and how you get on. So this video obviously will be on YouTube, but also on the Apple Education Forum. And if you have a great idea that you've taken from this, if you've had a great project idea, if it's inspired something, by all means, leave in the comments down below some ideas, and I'm sure all four of us will keep an eye on that and, and enjoy seeing what everyone is sharing. And if no one's watching this, then it'll be a very empty comment section and I guess a very sad video. But that's okay, because I've learned tons. It's been lovely speaking to the four of you, and I hope to see you all again soon. Thank you all so, so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.